Welcome to Hopeside Whispers. Today is the last day of March, and uh, it is March 31, 2023. Three months have passed by, so much has happened, and we can still say that uh, no matter what is happening around us, or maybe to some of us, that we have the faith and assurance that God is taking care of us. More specifically, last week, uh, three children, nine years of age, all killed by another young person in a church school. Can you imagine that? First week, 
of uh, April. Going into that, we hear this kind of news and so much other that is happening, so much tragedy. So uh, we are called as Christians to shine the light about what it uh, means to be a Christian, what it means to be a human being to begin with, which is to love one another. And so the first week of the month uh, uh, of any month is focused on uh, relationship matters, loving others. Here's a quotation for your consideration. Uh, it says, the love of liberty is the love of others. The love of power is the love of ourselves, written by William Hazlitt. I will read it again. The love of liberty is the love of others. Our liberty, our freedom is tied in with the welfare of others. The opening song is a familiar song called Come Thou Font of Every Blessing by the Fountain View Academy.
wonderful song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. And so now we will have the opening prayer by Dr. Sohana Chikatla. Hello, everybody. Happy Sabbath. Let's pray. Um, our Father, thank you so much for this beautiful uh, Sabbath evening that you have given to us, Lord, so we could come together at your um, throne, Lord, on our knees, uh, humbly, Lord. Um, our hearts are so touched, Lord, with this beautiful music. Uh, our hearts have been through so many things, Lord, during this week, Lord, um, and we are just so glad that we could come into this mercy of your blessing, Lord, and have this peace that we really need, Lord. Um, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this beautiful week that everybody has had, Lord. Uh, many of us have been healthy. Many of us had had family to be with, Lord. Um, but I know there are many that are suffering right now, Lord. Uh, like Anand mentioned about the shooting, Lord. It's so heartbreaking to see children in such situations, Lord, having to witness these things and having to go through these things, Lord, and parents having to deal the loss of their child. Lord, at this time, I just bring all those parents in your care, Lord. Please take care of their hearts. Take away their pain. Take away their suffering. Take away the things that hurt them so much, Lord. Uh, Satan has really cursed this earth lord satan has done so many things to hurt people lord and i know you have this beautiful heaven for us waiting lord help us to just strive to do everything that you want us to do right lord so that we can make it to that heaven lord that you have prepared for us um lord i sincerely want to pray for every individual here in this group lord we are so blessed to have zoom meetings so we could learn from you and understand from you lord all your words everything that you have given to us, all the mercy that you have shown to us through your word, Lord, things that you have given to us. Sometimes we just miss it when we are in pain and suffering, Lord. At this time, open it to us, Lord, that we can see it and understand you better. Uh, thank you, Lord, so much for uh, Pastor Parikal, Lord. He's such a great preacher, and we are just so excited to have him again, Lord. Please give him the right words, right lessons that we all need to learn right now lord uh, in this last days lord we are seeing so many things going around us lord so much turmoil so much pain so much suffering so much of so many people going through so many things lord and things we never known could happen lord are happening to people lord and we are just glad that uh, we can come to your throne and we can have peace and we can find peace lord at this time, I also want to pray for a couple of people who need healing, Lord. Uh, I know you can heal anybody if you just say, call you on your, uh, call upon your name, Lord. But I know it's more peaceful to have somebody pray for you. And so at this time, I want to pray for a Madhu Chinta, Julie Dondapati, Vila, Auntie Vilasani, Mary Naka, and Arul Das, Lord. Uh, and also for Babu Benjamin for comfort, Lord. Um, please be with all these families that need healing and prayer, Lord. Uh, please give them the understanding to do all the right things that they need for healing and that you will show them where to go and give them the best care, the best doctors, the best nurses that can surround them and give them all the help that they need, Lord, and that the family can have the peace, peace and understanding and patience to take care of them. I also want to uh, pray for auntie and uncle Ratan Raj that they can go to India and get all their uh, issues taken care of and they, they can come back home safely, Lord. We're just so glad they are here, Lord. And everybody in this group, Lord, all of us have some kind of prayer that we have, Lord. Silent prayers, Lord. I just want to raise those into your care and keeping so that uh, we can look up to you and be healed, Lord, just by looking up to you, Lord. Thank you so much for all your love. Thank you so much for our assurance. Help us to have a good Sabbath and the rest of the Sabbath, Lord. Uh, be with us and take care of us, Lord, first in the precious name. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Please uh, go ahead and read the scripture selection for tonight. The scripture selection is Exodus 16.15. And it says, I'm reading from the King James Version. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wish not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord had given you to eat. 
may God um, add his blessings to this portion of scripture that has been added to us. Uh, help us to understand it through Pastor Parakal. Thank you. We're glad to have Pastor Thompson Varakal, Parakal joining us again to give the message. Many of us already know about his great passion for ministry and mission that he engages in and has engaged in for many years. And so here is Pastor Parakal. May God uh, be with him as he brings the word for tonight's Vespers. Good evening, church. Mm. Happy Good evening. Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Let's begin with a prayer. Father in heaven, we come in your presence this evening to seek that face. Thank you so much for this time. As the deer panteth for streams of water, our soul longeth after you. Fill us with your word. We have come thirsty. We have been drinking water from different wells. But you have said, come to me. I will give you waters that you will never thirst again. Please fill us with that waters. So that we will have a spring in us. But we'll never thirst again for this worldly wells of water. Thank you once again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Today's topic is manna. We have gone through this topic many a times. We have read this in the Bible many a times. This is found in Exodus chapter 16. But let's find out what else can we learn from this. Manna incidents. First, it says here in chapter 16, it's very strange that they were moving from Egypt. The children of Israel were moving from Egypt to the promised land. And when they were in the wilderness, it was at that time God decided to give them manna to eat. And the Bible says in Exodus chapter 16 verses 36 and the children of Israel did eat manna 40 years. How many years they ate manna? 40 years in the wilderness. And the Bible says, as you read the book of Exodus, chapter 16, manna fell every day. And God told them to pick up manna every morning. In fact, every morning, early morning, the manna fell. So God asked them to pick up manna, every man, how much he could eat, only that much manna had to be picked up. If it is for a family of four, he had to pick up that much which will sustain the family only for that day. So the manna fell in the morning. The children of Israel had to move out of their comfort zone, out of their house, perhaps in the courtyard or outside and they had to go on their knees with a bowl in their hand and they had to collect this manna. Just visualize with me every morning, perhaps before sunrise, all the children of Israel outside their homes on their knees with a bowl in their hand collecting this manna. And the Bible says 21st verse and they gathered it every morning every man according to his eating. 
and when the sun waxed hot it melted please keep this in mind they had to collect it early morning because the sun rose and became a little hot the entire manna just got melted wow this is a lesson for us who are living in the last days jesus is trying to teach us some lessons from this story of manna do you know that manna moses was asked to keep in the sanctuary in the most holy place in the place where the 10 commandments was there there the manna was kept amazing that means there are some lessons that we have to learn from this manna story and it's a very simple lesson the first thing we find in deuteronomy chapter 8 verses 3 Jesus is telling us that I fed them manna from heaven. I'll read this to you. He humbled them and suffered thee to hunger and feed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread alone. but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of god so christ is teaching us some lessons here he is trying to teach us that every day you need to depend upon me in john in fact john chapter 6 verses 51 john chapter 6 verses 51 in fact from 49 let's read john chapter 6 verses 49 on one minute and just yeah young the pages chapter 6 verses 49 it says here your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead 50 this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 i am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh which i will give for the life of the world and the 40th verse he says i am the bread of life so it's telling us here that manna which god gave to ancient israel it's a depiction of jesus and so he's telling us the children of israel had to collect manna daily they couldn't keep something extra for the next day if they kept it for the next day the bible says in exodus chapter 16 that it stank and bread worms huh so christ was trying to teach them a lesson every day you need to come to me to take blessings you can't study or you can't pray one day in a week and say that's enough next three days i'm fine christ is teaching us some lessons here the manna came early in the morning before sunrise they had to collect it christ is teaching us something here brothers and sisters who are in the last days of earth's history christ is teaching us wake up early in the morning 
to eat the bread of life that is Jesus. We need to wake up early in the morning and spend time with Jesus. You know why? Because after sunrise, as the day passes by, as it is in the wilderness, that the manna melted. It is possible that after sunrise, we get so caught up with our work, with our schedule, that we do not find time for Jesus. And so Christ is teaching us here. He's admonishing us here that you wake up early in the morning and spend time with me in prayer, in studying God's word. Because man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. He tells us, in fact, in John chapter 5, verses 39, search the scriptures. In it, you can get eternal life. The children of Israel had to get up from their rooms, come outside. You know, brothers and sisters, I'd been for many uh, camp meetings. And they asked me in the morning to take this uh, early morning prayer with the uh, young people. So I woke up these young people in the morning and said, for the first half an hour, we are going to spend some quiet time with the Lord. After that, we'll all come together and pray. And I was just watching all the young youth. And I saw many of them, they woke up from their beds. They sat on their beds. It was a hill station. So they have covered themselves with a blanket, sitting on the bed. And they are whispering a prayer. And I checked this out. There were a few of them, as they were praying, they even dozed off to sleep. <laughs> Christ is teaching us some lessons here. He's telling you need to move out of your bed. You need to move out to a place where you can have time with Jesus. We need to have, brothers and sisters, a special place where we can have a special time with Jesus. It should happen early in the morning because a master spend much time early in the morning in prayer. There were two or three miracles that happened. Every day. Christ was teaching them. That you need to collect only for that day. You cannot collect for the next day. Christ is teaching us. That you can have prayers and Bible studies. But that will sustain you only for that day. It cannot keep you for the next day. One week, many of us think that on the Sabbath, we meet with Jesus, we come to church, and that's it. We don't require Jesus in the whole week. That's a lie. According to the Bible, we need Jesus daily. We need to depend on him daily because he is the bread of life. We need to partake of Jesus every day. That means every day I need to come to Christ and say, Lord, like Apostle Paul, help me to die to self. Because that old man of sin keeps popping up. If I don't spend time with Jesus, if I don't spend time studying God's word. So every day we need to spend time with Jesus in prayer. So the Miracle that happened is every day they had to collect manna. If they collected extra, the Bible says it's tank and bread worms. But you know, the amazing thing is on the sixth day, God asked them to collect double the portion of manna. And the children of Israel collected a double portion of the manna. And the next day, on the Sabbath day, they found that it did not stink or get worms or bread worms. That was a miracle. Christ was teaching us something through this. What was the lesson that Christ was teaching us? 
on the sixth day, collect twice. Why twice? So that on the Sabbath day, you don't have to go outside and collect it. And the bread which you have collected on the sixth day will remain fresh on the Sabbath day. What lessons do we learn from this? In fact, in the sanctuary, the priest used to take the loaves of bread and replace it with fresh loaves of bread as the Sabbath began. And that old bread that was there in the sanctuary, in the holy place, he used to eat it himself. Christ was trying to teach us some lessons. That on the Sabbath day, God wants to bless you with more spiritual blessings. In fact, the prophet, prophet writes, the prayers made on the Sabbath day are answered even before the sun sets. Amen. So Christ was trying to teach us some lessons in this wilderness journey of the children of Israel. Brothers and sisters, do we know that we are also in the wilderness journey? Sister White writes, in 1888, we had come to the borders of spiritual Canaan. But as a church, we did not accept the message of Christ, our righteousness. And she says, we, like the children of Israel, have taken the journey backwards and now are in the wilderness. And she says, God knows how long we are going to be in the wilderness. So, brothers and sisters, the children of Israel, as the Bible says, in Exodus chapter 16, it says, Christ, on purpose, in their journey in the wilderness, decided to do something. He decided to give them manna. Why he decided to give them manna? Let's see it from the Bible. In Exodus chapter 16, verses 4, it says, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my laws or not. Christ was trying to test them. And so he allowed manna to come down from heaven. Six days they had to gather every day. The first five days, on the sixth day, they had to gather a double portion. I'll read it to you so that you get it very clear. It says, 16th chapter, 16th verse. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Gather of it every man according to his eating. And Omer for every man according to the number of your persons. Take ye every man for them which are in the tent. And the children of Israel did so and gathered some more, some less. 18th verse. And when they did meet it with an Omer, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And 19th verse says, And Moses said, let no man leave of it till the morning. 20th verse. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. So every day they had to collect that much for that day. Brothers and sisters, Christ is teaching us every morning Early in the morning, he's asking us to wake up. In fact, in Isaiah chapter 50, it says Jesus was woken up early in the morning by his father. 
Amen. He wanted to spend time with his father in prayer. I'll read to you uh, Isaiah. It is found in Isaiah. Mm. Isaiah chapter 50. It says here. Please listen to this. Uh, 50 verses 4. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learner that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ear to hear as the learner. If the Lord Jesus was woken up by his father, what about us? We need to ask the Lord Jesus. We want to have a relationship with you. Please wake us up in the morning so that we can spend time with you in prayer. And he would do that, brothers and sisters. We need to wake up early in the morning and spend time and take the blessings that are there for that day so that we will be having enough just for that day. In fact, uh, Sister White writes, uh, when you rise in the morning, kneel down at your bedside and ask God to give you strength to fulfill the duties of the day and to meet its temptations. Ask him to help you to bring into your work Christ's sweetness of character. Ask him to help you to speak words that will inspire those around you with hope and courage and that they will draw nearer to the Savior. This is the prayer that Sister White even bends down so that we can make this prayer when we wake up in the morning. The first thing in the morning, Christ is asking us, to spend time with him in prayer. Question to all of you. We all have bread in our home. But the Bible says here. When the children of Israel. Kept bread for the next day. It's tank. And it bread worms. Huh? I've kept bread in my home for four or five days. I did not see any worms in it. It did not stink. In fact, it had a black color or a green color mold on it. How come this bread? It looks like bread. But it's like meat. It stinks. It breads worms. That's what the properties of meat is. If you keep meat outside. And it purifies. You get a different order. And then it breeds worms. What is Christ trying to tell us here? To this story that on the sixth day. You collect a double portion. Of uh, the manna. And the portion on the Sabbath day. Will remain fresh. But this is we just read in John. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He who eats this bread, my flesh and my blood, he shall never die. Jesus was laid in the tomb on Friday. And brothers and sisters, on Sabbath day, Jesus did not have worms. His body did not stink. In fact, on uh, the first day of the week, early in the morning, Jesus was risen from the dead. And Christ is trying to tell us something. He's telling your dependence should be so much on me, more than your money, more than anything else in your life. Are we more dependent? Upon the money that we earn. That it will sustain us. 
It is not the money that sustained us, brothers and sisters. It is Christ, the bread of life, who has sustained us. No wonder in the New Testament, the first temptation that Jesus comes across in the wilderness, when he was going through a 40 days fasting in the wilderness, he was tempted of the devil. Take a stone and make it bread. And Jesus said, man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So Jesus is trying to tell us the meaning of manna. They do not know what is this. So they said the Hebrew word is literally, what is this? Every morning we need to come to God and say, what is this Lord? What is it? That is keeping me away from you. If there is anything that is keeping me away from you. Remove it out from my life. What is it Lord. That you want of me today. What can I do for you today. Oh God. That should be a prayer. Every morning. You know. Uh, let's read. Another portion. It's found in. Uh, Exodus chapter 31. A lot of lessons to learn, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, many of us wake up in the morning. You know what we do? We are sleepy eyed. And uh, we miss this opportunity of spending time with Jesus. And we go to work, we go to different places. Without spending time with Jesus. We are living in a dangerous world. We don't know what's in store for us. It might be on the road. Some calamity takes place. As uh, Dr. Just said. About the shooting incident. We don't know what's in store. Don't we need Jesus early in the morning. Before we leave our homes. Now, manna means, what is this? Will we ask the Lord, Lord, what is this that is hindering us from coming closer to you? Is it this boyfriend of mine? Is it this girlfriend of mine? Is it this lust that is there in my eyes or something? Is it this mobile that is coming in between you and me? What is it, Lord, as parents? Is my child become an idol in my life? More than you, Lord. Lord, if that is the case, Lord, show it to me. I want to remove everything that is coming in between you and me. Let's read Exodus chapter 31. 31 verses 17. Mind you, in Exodus 16 that we are studying about manna. God has not yet given to them the Ten Commandments. But in the 16th chapter, we see that God is telling them every day collect the manna. But on the sixth day, collect double portion of the manna. And he did not do it for one day. He did not do it for one week. He did not do it for one month. He did not do it for one year. He did it for 40 years. So that it gets impressed in their mind. That six days you need to work. And the seventh day is a Sabbath of the law. Amen. We get this very clear. Many of us uh, say. Uh, we need to work brother. On the Sabbath day. You don't know what we are going through in life. We need that paycheck. Uh, to sustain us all through the month. But Christ is teaching us here something. That I am the bread of life. I sustain you. It's not your paycheck that sustains you. It's not your house that sustains you. It is I who sustain you. Today, if need be, I can take the breath of life from your nostrils. What will be that money in your account do? What will be that house do for you? <coughs> Let's read Exodus chapter 31, 16. It says, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. 
to observe the Sabbath throughout the generation as a perpetual covenant. 17. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Brothers and sisters, do you want to be refreshed? If you want to be refreshed, then keep the Sabbath day. Don't wake up in the morning and say, oh, I can't do my work. When will the sun set? I needed to go to the market. I've seen this happen when I've gone to the Adventist camp. At three o'clock, there are pastors with their marketing bag moving towards the gate. And I asked them, Pastor, where are you going? I said, no, no, no. I'm just going for a Bible study. Uh-huh. Do we love the Sabbath of the Lord? Do you want to be refreshed? Especially when this time, when there is sickness all around us. Don't we want to be refreshed? As the Bible says. Something else is mentioned. The book of Genesis. In the book of Exodus chapter 16. Christ in his mercy. Wanted the children of Israel. Before they enter the promised land. To eat this bread that came down from heaven. He wanted to cut away the non-veg brothers and sisters. I am stamping on someone's feet. I'm sorry. But I need to say this to you brothers and sisters. Christ was teaching a lesson. That in this wilderness experience. You need to discard non-veg. And bank upon the bread that I have given you, which is mentioned in Genesis chapter 1, verses 29. Nuts, fruits, and vegetables. Do you know, brothers and sisters? I'll read it to you. I'll read it to you what the children of Israel did. Brothers and sisters, the same thing is happening in our camp. I'll read it to you. It is found. It is found in Numbers, Exodus also, sixteen chapter. Numbers chapter eleven. Listen to this. Christ was giving them bread from heaven, unimaginable in the wilderness. He was giving them uh, a beautiful. Uh, Dining table with food upon it. But let's see what the children of Israel did. We have to learn this lesson, brother. It's not just to uh, read this and say, wow, that was wonderful. But we need to apply it in our lives. We need to apply this in our lives. 11th chapter. Let's see what happened. 11th chapter says fourth word. The same incident of the manna. Is given this 11th chapter. But little more details are given. It says here in the fourth verse. And the mixed multitude. That was among them. Felt a lusting. And the children of Israel. Also. Wept. Again. And said. Who shall give us flesh to eat. Fifth. We remember the fish. Which we did eat. In Egypt. Freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Six, but now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Tenth verse. It says, Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of the tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses was also displeased. What were they doing, brothers and sisters? When Christ was giving them manna to eat, what were they doing? They did not want to eat that food. They said we were better off in Egypt. Our hands and legs were tied. We were slashed behind by whips. But we got to eat flesh. Ah, I need to eat that flesh. I'm literally dying. I need that flesh. And you know what they were doing? 
as if some member of the house was dead. They were weeping, crying loud, loudly. And Moses heard this. Brothers and sisters, we are on the borders of Canaan. We are right now in the wilderness. And Christ is also through the prophet asking us to come back to the Edenic food in this wilderness experience. And she writes to us in councils to diet and food. The book Temperance, meat eating causes cancer. And then she writes, we are able to get 10 times more sickness if we are eating flesh food. She has written to us this in 1800s. Sad to say, I just attended a marriage a week ago of a Christian. And there were Adventists, around 20 or 30 of us, who had attended this wedding. After the wedding was over, the announcement was made. There might be 100, 150 people in that hotel. The announcement was made. Food is ready. Please go and help yourself. The others were non-Christians. The others were Sunday church keeping people. To my surprise, I was shocked when I saw near the counter, there were no pagans, no Hindus, no Muslims, no Christians. But near the non-veg counter, they were Adventists standing with their plate and requesting. Some I could hear saying, I, I need that bone. I need that bone. I need this. I need this. Whew. It was a shameful thing. Brothers and sisters, we are on our way to spiritual Canaan. In heaven, we are not going to find meat. And God is preparing us for Canaan. And so he's asking us, let go of the flesh. That is not the right diet for you. Because this will cause sickness. In fact, I'll read to you. Sister White writes this in Medical Missionary book. Medical Missionary, page 277. She writes this to us. Admonition to all of us. He would carry them, the children of Israel, to Canaan. To establish them as a holy happy people, that there should be non-feeble among the tribes. He would take away all the sickness from amongst them. Did you hear, brothers and sisters, there is a pandemic all around us for the past two years, and still we are being attacked with this pandemic, and Christ is telling us this. Please read with me Exodus chapter 15, verses 26. He says, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases among thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptian. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Brothers and sisters, today I would love to give you an LIC policy. I've done this before. I'd like to give you this LIC policy. Oh, you might be insured for one crore rupees. But today, on the Sabbath, I want to give you a policy. Life in Christ policy. Spend time with the word of God. Spend time talking to Jesus. Emptying your hearts. We are carrying heavy burdens along with us. And we spend so little time that the burdens remain open us. All through the day, all through the week, all through the month, all through the year, we are carrying heavy burdens. Today, on the Sabbath, let's uh, go to Jesus, who has said, come unto me, all those who are burdened and heavy laden. Take my yoke, give your heavy yokes to me, and take this light yoke. May we come to Jesus this Sabbath. May we undo all that we have with us and put it upon Christ 
who is our burden bearer, who can give us eternal life. May we eat the bread of life, manna. May we eat this every day. Don't skip even one day, brothers and sisters. We are living in dangerous times. We need the Lord every day. We sing the song. People need the Lord. We need the Lord, brothers and sisters. Don't miss out even one day. And that Sister White writes, a consistent Christian. I'll read to you what she writes. A consistent Christian. A consistent life in Christ is a great miracle. Amen. A consistent life. As Christians, we should be consistent. Every day, we need to spend time with Jesus. Not one day waking up at 4 o'clock and having some amazing time. And then next three days, no time with Jesus. And the fourth day, again, little time with Jesus. Look at the sun. Every morning at a particular time, it rises up. Every day at a particular time. We, as Christians, should have a particular time to spend with Jesus. We have to have a particular place to spend time with Jesus. And the children of Israel bent on their knees. On knees. Humble ourselves, lift up our hands this way and say, Lord, here I come today. I'm burdened. I'm tired. I'm heavy laden. Lord, I've become Laodicea. I'm neither hot nor cold. There's so much self within me, Lord. Today I come. Take all this self. I surrender myself at your feet. I want to die, oh Lord, today to self. This old man keeps popping up. I think I'm better than everyone else. Lord, help me. Christ can do something. Amazing to all of us. God be with each and every one of you. This day is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Thompson, for that very powerful message about the meaning of manna or manna. I have not heard so many great points about that wilderness experience and what it really means and what God was trying to teach the children of Israel. And so before we uh, have our closing song, these are the prayer requests. And uh, uh, these people were already prayed for, but I'll repeat again for your uh, closing prayer, Pastor Thompson. Mr. Madhu Chinta, I visited him today and truly, you know, it's a miracle that he survived with his leg intact. Of course, he is uh, healing. A lot of uh, recovery is needed. And also Mrs. Julie Dondapati, Mrs. Mary Naka, Vilasni Sarang, and Mr. Babu Benjamin's family. He has passed away. Uh, so comfort for his family, and also healing for Mr. T. Aruldas. Mm. And also our praise reports. We are glad that Mr. and Mrs. Ratanraj are safely back after uh, successfully resolving their property issue in uh, Pune. That's what I'm told. So we thank God for that. And uh, the closing song, it's a Telugu song. And uh, the lady who, the young lady who's singing is related to Fancy Chinta, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it.
Hope you enjoyed that song. <clears throat> Beautifully sung by the young lady. And so now we will have the closing prayer. Let's pray. Oh, kind and gracious and loving Father, to look in your presence this evening to seek thy face. Thank you so much for this time that we could come into your presence to study about manna. Father, we want to be completely dependent upon thee for everything in our lives. You try to teach the children of Israel to bank on you. Not one day, not one week, not one month, not one year, but 40 years. You are teaching us the same lesson that in our lifespan of 60, 70 years, we need to depend upon thee every day, every hour, every minute. Help us to know this, that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from your mouth. We have Bibles in our home, Lord. Many of us have four, five Bibles in our home. But we have failed to even study. We have failed to spend time with Jesus. This evening, we want to confess our own. And ask forgiveness. This evening, we want to redirect our focus from this world, from the problems, to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who is the bread of life. Who in the tomb did not stink or get worms. The same God can keep us alive. And keep us from all problems if we keep our gaze unto him. Because he has said in Exodus 23-25, I will bless your bread and water and I will take away all sickness from your midst. Help us this day. Take this message. Have mercy upon all of us. Some of us are sick and quietly. healing. This day, pray in a special way. Mr. Madhu Chinta. Pray for Mrs. Julie. Mrs. Vilasani. Mrs. Mary Naka. We pray for all of us that you would give them health and strength. We pray for the grieving family that you will sustain them. You will take care of them. You will comfort them in this time of sorrow as they have lost a dear one. Please be with us. Guide us and lead us that we would be obedient to every word that you say so that we would live. Thank you once again for this time. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Pastor Thompson, for that wonderful message and the prayer. May God bless our bread and water and uh, heal us of our sicknesses that we may have. May that be the prayer of all of us. Thank you all for joining. And uh, it was a blessed evening, especially I want to mention uh, Benny Raju and uh, Alfred Raju for joining. And I even see Mr. Ajay Kumar. Thank you for joining us. And uh, may God bless you all as you spend the Sabbath on the Sabbath, which is tomorrow for you. Next week, April 6, uh, Mrs. Premila Padapodi will speak. Hope uh, all of you will join. In June and July, those dates, actually they are all on uh, the Fridays, Vespers time. Dr. Jason Israel will take us through the book of Revelation. More uh, details will be forthcoming later. So let us now meet and greet one another.
Hello, Mr. Parakal. Thank you so much for the message. I really, really appreciate it. Um, you know, the morning mana is so important. Reading the word of God, depending on him. Um, <laughs> I mean, I know, you know, you're a very brave person. Uh, you, you seek your heart and you're not afraid as long as it is God's word, you know, and we really appreciate that. I know you mentioned how uh, people are going backwards, right? Israel uh, with the journey. Uh, and it's many churches have that issue. You know, we depend on our own rules. We try to make rules, it's parasitical rules in our churches now. Everybody wants to be in control, uh, you know, and make rules that are not biblical instead of depending on God. Completely, complete dependent, you know, like simple thing as people are worried if somebody could come and molest their child in the church, right? Instead of depending on God and the whole church praying for the kids of our church, praying for every kid in our church, they want to make rules of who can come, who cannot come, who can, you know. Um. So we need to pray for all the churches that are going through this where they want to control it themselves. They want to come up with ways of, because it's, it's going to be eventually, I made that rule and I made that rule. And so our kids are going to be safe. It should not be that. It should be, it's God's rule and God is going to take care of our kids and we are going to pray to him. We're going to depend on him for our kids to be safe. You know, even small thing as that, we have to remember to constantly depend on God and not come up with our own ways to protect our children. Because when Satan wants to snatch our ch children, he will find every means to get them away. So that's why it's so important for us to. And thank you so much for reminding us. And thank you for being you and speaking your heart. <laughs> Please don't let that light stop. Keep it shining. We really appreciate it. Your mic is turned off, so I cannot hear you. Thank you so much. I'll be keeping you all in prayer. Doc. God bless. Hello, brother uh, Parakal. Sorry, my throat isn't good today, but um, I am Pramila, and um, that message was really, really great. And you're right, we have to depend totally on God. That's, my, that's been my experience throughout all this time. So thank Amen. you for bringing us that message this evening. And God bless your ministry as well. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Keep you in prayer. Yes. To cover us fast. <laughs> on God's works. Once again. We need that. Yeah. God bless you, sister. And one more thing I need to tell you is, nowadays, even though we have four or five Bibles and we don't open them, I think older folks like us who need glasses to read feel very <laughs> with the phone because we can make it bigger, you know, even though we get it. But no, you're right. Bible in the house is good for each one of us and to read it. Thank you so much, Pastor Parakal. I'm Sonia here. Uh, I'm also <laughs> having cold here. So it is really true that we have to depend only on God. Every yeah. example you said uh, made me think, isn't it uh, true that we have to totally depend on God? Uh, I've faced uh, many situations where I totally depended on God. And uh, sometimes there were uh, doubts as well. Uh, what are what am I going to do? You know. So thank you for reminding us that God is love, and we can always depend on Him. Thank you. Yeah. 
Praise him. Praise him. Thank you, sir. And uh, I've observed that you to- you you were talking from your heart. You know, uh, everything that uh, every example you said, it was more inspirational because you you were talking it from your heart. And uh, thank you for um, yeah, God's word from you. Praise him. Thank you, Pastor, for bringing out a beautiful and profound thought that we must depend on Jesus every moment of our lives and to have special time to spend with our Savior. Thank you for your messages, your support for Hope Side Church, and we hope you'll continue to support us. God bless your ministry. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed how it got uh, daytime in the back your window was dark and then then became daytime so beautiful yeah. we home of course <laughs> the sunlight came through yeah I know that was very nice oh, yeah I just, just miss India that's all it looks I like say. he's in it looks like he's in the kitchen so <laughs> right in the kitchen <laughs> bye bye see you bye all. thank you okay happy Sabbath Bye bye. Happy Sabbath. Yes. We'll keep you in our Thank prayer. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah. Please spend Happy time. Yeah. Please spend time in prayer. Yes. 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 We have yes. To do that. yes. Yeah. And especially when we uh, really spend time early in the mornings, uh, yes. that's when God really hears our prayers. Yes. When we willfully wake up in the morning and spend time before we do things right yeah